1, and we'll look at a verse of scripture there in Mark chapter 1, and also in John chapter 1, I believe, or maybe 2, Mark chapter number 1. Am I forgetting something? It looks like I'm forgetting an announcement. Mark chapter 1. Oh, we got a new baby somewhere. It's not here. Um, Sister Kim, man, it's Brother Ricky, happy parents this week, a baby boy, and uh, named it after his pastor. Wasn't that sweet of him? He really didn't. His name's Richard Daniel, but it's named after him, Richard Daniel Manis Jr., and uh, they'll probably be with us real soon, won't they, Brother Rick? <laughs> Amen. Boy, it sure messed your life up. What are you doing on the back row? <laughs> He's up here last Sunday. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. You know, if I was you, I'd name, I'd put his middle, I'd make his middle name Prayin. Prayin Manus. <laughs> All right, I'll be a, Huh? No, no. I think that pray, that pray in it fit in there real good. <laughs> Mark chapter one, and then uh, we'll look at John chapter one also. Now I know some of you probably won't understand this, and and you may think that I'm. At the, I believe the Lord laid this message on my heart. I hardly ever. Matter of fact, very, very seldom I preach on the same thing two Sundays in a row. And last Sunday night, I preached on a lot of things that I'm going to be preaching about tonight. And uh, how many of you remember what I preached on last Sunday night? Oh, glory to God. That's about more than I thought would. Well, the rest of you won't make no difference to you anyway. <clears throat> what did I preach on? Uh, Right, God's threefold plan for the church. And the first one was to, second one was to, <laughs> third one was to, grow. first one was go, grow, and then glow. All right? Now, I talked a lot about soul winning. I'm going to do that again tonight. I feel like since this revival's coming up, and I don't know, it's just been on my heart that every child of God should be a soul winner. So I'm going to you tonight on the subject Everybody can win somebody. Everybody can win somebody. I believe that's a, the Bible approach to soul winning tonight. And I know that we have a lot of people here that want to be soul winners. We have a lot of people in here that are soul winners. And every Christian that's really right with God, I mean, there's something inside you think, boy, I'd like to win somebody to the Lord. That's a good sign that your heart's right if you want to be a soul winner. I want our church, among a lot of other things, to be a soul-winning church. I talked to a man on the airplane the other day, and uh, he told me about a bunch of their church. And I said, oh, you must belong to a soul-winning church. He said, well, I don't really like the term soul-winning. He said, well, we witness, and the Lord is the soul-winner. He wins the souls. Trying to sound real pious. And I said, well, I get that from Proverbs 11, 30. He that win a soul is wise. And he said, yeah. Uh, yeah, you better believe, yeah. That's in the Bible. He that win a soul is wise. It's amazing how religious some people get and at the same time so unscriptural. Now I tell you, brother, I believe that this church ought to be a soul winning church. Just like you win somebody over to your way of thinking, you win somebody to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've never done it, now, I don't mean to embarrass anybody. Now, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I'm trying to give a pat on the back where it's due. How many of you have won a soul, you have personally led somebody to Jesus, or you have brought somebody to church and they got saved as a result of you witnessing to them being in church in 1985? Would you raise your hand? I raise my hand. Would you? Glory. Look at that. Praise the Lord. All over the building, hands have gone up of people who have personally led somebody to the Lord in 1985. Now, I tell you, if I was really trying to witness and I hadn't won a soul in 1985, I'd begin to get worried. I'd begin to get down to business. 
I'd say, Lord, what is wrong? I want to buy some fruit. You said if I abide in you, that I'd bring forth much fruit. And I ain't bringing forth no fruit, Lord. If I ain't abiding in you, I want to kick myself in the ditches and start abiding in you. And, and overcome my handicap and win somebody. And so I'm not trying to jump on you tonight. I'm trying to encourage these who want to be so winners. How many of you people would like to win somebody, the Lord, between now and the end of 1985? Raise your hand. You'd like to win somebody, the Lord. All right, this message is for you. Everybody can win somebody. John, or Mark chapter 1, look at verse number 17. We'll be talking a lot about this verse. Mark chapter 1, verse 17. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I might make you to become fishers of men. No, no, no. I mean, what it said. Come ye after me, and I probably will make you to become fishers of men. No. Come ye after me, I will make you fishers of men. In John chapter 1, we'll notice in verse number 43. John chapter 1, verse 43. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find the Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now look at here. In verse 44, As soon as Philip got saved. Now Philip was a Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Watch it. Watch verse 45. Watch it real close. Mark it. Philip found Nathaniel and saith unto him, we have found him. You know, then people say, You didn't find the Lord. Oh, I don't, wouldn't be so sure about that. I've heard people say, I didn't find God, he found me. That's half right. You found each other. That's right. You, you say, I wasn't looking for God. Not at first you wasn't. But when you got under conviction, you started looking for him, didn't you? Amen. That's the way it works. I mean, but I wasn't, I wasn't looking for God until I got under conviction. And when I got under conviction, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart. Then I started looking for God. Yeah. Don't, don't, people, preachers just don't think. They get a hold of something and say, Glory to God, that'll preach. And they went off the deep end on it before they check it with a book. Yeah. And he comes in and he said, We found it. And they did. The Lord found them first. And then they found him. The Lord finds you, then you find the Lord. And I tell you, brother, he said we found him of whom Moses in the law. When Moses wrote a prophet, said the Lord your God raised up unto me in Shiloh, come and all that stuff. And the prophets did right. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Verse 46. And Nathaniel said, he didn't believe it first. Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, you come see for yourself, big boy. And I tell you, brother, he came to him and he got him saved. And he came and he got Nathaniel, his brother, and or Andrew and Peter, and brother he told them, and then there's another and then there's another place done. Look at verse forty. John chapter one verse forty. Everybody look at it. We're laying a foundation for this message. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him is Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. What did he do? He first found up his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Look at verse 42. And he brought him to Jesus. Isn't that something? He went out, he found the Lord, and the Lord saved him. He first thing he does went out and got his brother and said, Brother, I've got saved. You gotta meet this man I'm talking about. And he brought his brother to Jesus. Like Brother Page brought Brother Thomas, where is Brother Thomas? To Jesus. I don't know if there's any more brothers that have, is there any more brothers that have brought your brother to Jesus here tonight? Is there any sisters that have brought your sister to Jesus? Any sisters that have brought your sister to Jesus? None? No sister? I was one. Anyone else? Anyone else? Any? Uh, anybody in here that have won your daddy or your mother to Jesus? Anybody? How many of you have led your child to Jesus? I did. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. All right. That's the first thing that, excuse me, a man does when he gets saved. He goes after his immediate family and he tries to bring them to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a sure sign you've got it when you try to bring somebody else to Jesus. It bothers me when people get saved and you go home and you tell the family about a week ago, so and so got saved. And they say, you did? 
I don't know anything about it. It bothers me. I don't say they didn't get saved, but it bothers me when people don't tell their family. Everybody in the Bible, seen like the Lord up, went straightway and went home and told what great things the Lord done for. If you got saved, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not, there's nothing to be ashamed of telling your daddy, telling your mom. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I tell you, brother, we ought to bring them to Jesus. He brought his brother to Jesus, and we ought to do it. I'm going to preach tonight on everybody can win somebody. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. God, thank you, Lord, for the privilege of dying on our knees and calling you our Father. Lord, God, we're glad you found us one day, and we found you. Amen. God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you look down from heaven. God, that you don't want this creature with it, these lips of clay with a hold of God. Dear God, tonight we know that we're unable. God, we don't have any power of our own. So help us tonight, Father. Help us to preach. Help us to say something that will encourage these dear folk to bring souls to you. And whatever, however, and whatever you do for us, we'll praise you and thank you for it. Cleanse us from every sin. Wash us in the blood of the Lamb. God, stir our church tonight. Send us out of here like a mighty army to witness to men, women, boys, and girls. And we'll praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody can win somebody. I'm going to talk about fishers of men and how to catch men. The Lord called them fishermen and he said, if you'll come out to me, you're going to start, instead of fishing for fish, you're going to fish for men. The beginning of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's still calling men today to be fishers of men. Will you be one of those? Will you be one of those who responds to his call to become a fisher of men? I've heard everything in the world that I've all kinds of excuses why people don't get saved. I go and preach revivals in churches and preachers tell me they say people don't get saved around here. And and I know some places it is harder than others. I believe the gospel will work anywhere if it's presented enough in enough places there's no enough lost heart. Somebody is going to get saved. I tell you, brother, we need to become fishers of men. You know what churches have become in this day and time? Instead of fishers of men, we become keepers of the aquarium. How about all churches do? Just swap members. I mean, some of them go over there, some of them come over here, and, and sometimes that's, that's good, and a lot of times it ought to be done, but we ought to be getting some new fish, too. I mean, we ought to be catching some out of the lake out there and hauling them in. And I believe we ought to be doing it and can be doing it. Now, we're talking about uh, church members tonight and statistics say, and of course, you know about statistics, they're not the same thing. But statistics say, for what it's worth, that 95% of our church members never lead one soul to the Lord Jesus Christ. 95%. That means all the people who are one to the Lord are one to the Lord by 5% of the professing Christian. That's a sad thing. That's a tragic thing. That 5% of the Christians win all the people to the Lord. How many people here tonight was one to the Lord in a one-on-one -on -one situation? Now, I got saved in church. I got saved in the altar. We know about this church. And well, I know most of you probably did. But how many people here tonight was on your home, on your job, or somewhere where it was a one-to-one -one situation? Somebody come to your house, or maybe you called up a preacher, or somebody got saved because somebody took the Bible and opened it to them and showed them. Would you raise your hand? All right, there's one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. About twenty-two or three people in this church tonight have been saved by somebody going and telling them about the Lord. But you know what? The that puts right at my feet. Lord of God, that makes me want to go tell somebody about Jesus. Yeah, I, I've had a door slammed in my face. I've had people get hateful and ugly to me, but that's no reason to quit. I tell you. Somebody down the road that will listen. Somebody else down the street that wants to listen. One time, I believe it was Ben Bellows went out visiting out there near where he used to live, and we went out there on uh, that that road going up to the Holly Street, I believe it was, and I believe it's Ben Bellows, and we went up there and we began. I tried to witness this woman, and and she opened the door about that far, and so I, I said, uh, we said, man, we're just out there, you know, like this, and she just barely could see it sticking her nose out that door, and she looked at us like, you know, what are you? Guys want. And and so I said, oh, there's a mailbox right here beside the 
the door and I think she had a bunch of mail in. I said, oh, is this your mail? And she said, yeah. And I started picking them out one at a time. And I picked one out and so I handed it to her and said, you got a church in your heart? And she'd say, no. And I said, are you a Christian? <laughs> and I, I, I just hold it up. I know she's getting ready to close the door and I just used that mail to hold the door open up a little while. And I know she probably didn't appreciate that too good. But I told the brother, uh, I mean, man, you gotta, you gotta use some kind of something tactics these days. Cause a lot of people are just don't want to hear the gospel. But our job is to tell it to them anyway. But anyway, let's talk about fishing. Now y'all gonna laugh at me, cause I ain't no good fisherman. I, I said, I'd Brother Tony come up here and preach this sermon. Or some of you other great fishermen. I know there's a lot of great fishermen in here tonight. But I tell you, don't you laugh at me. Don't you laugh at me. Uh, I, I know I'll probably make some mistakes, but I'm going to talk about going fishing, okay? And the same rules apply to fishing as they do to catching men to the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you men here tonight, I can imagine a woman liking to go fishing. How many of you men like to go fishing? Raise your hand. Oh, praise the Lord, almost every man in here raised his hand. Uh, how many of you men, I better not say that. How many of fishers of men? But anyway, brother, how are you men? How many of you ladies like to go fishing? Raise your hand. Lord, I want you to look at the tomboys around this church. Oh, I can't imagine you sitting out there on an old bucket all night long, no worm guts all over your fingers. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hey, anyway, brother, we're going to talk about fishing. And it's been years since I've been fishing. I used to like to go fishing when I was little, and we'd go down to the creek. And we used to make our hooks out of pins, just bend them, you know. Hard to catch a fish on them things. And we'd get a real good hook, and we used to catch what we call minnows, but they'd get up about that long down in the creek below where we live. And we'd just get one of Mom's biscuits or something, they'd make the best bait, and ball it up, make a real, real hard ball, and put it on there. And we'd, we'd catch a little bit of fish, wasn't that long. And it was fun. We used to sit down there and catch, we'd catch the same ones over and over and over. We'd catch some that have three or four holes around their lips. They wouldn't buy for about a week. They would. That's the truth. How many, how many of you guys ever done that? Got horny heads when you was little. They were horny heads and suckers down there. Man, I tell you, they get about that long. That's fine. Make your little bitty pole and catch, catch them things. And we got a fish pond right in front of our house and I never go fishing. I don't care one thing about fishing. It, I, I just, you know, it just don't do nothing for me. I get bored. After about two minutes sitting now, I get bored. And boy, I tell you, I, I, one time I caught a catfish down at my uncle's pond. Son, somebody forgot to tell me they'd stab you. And I caught a catfish when them was about that long, and I was, I despise to try to dick him and get out of it. You know, when the hook gets way down the throat, and you try to reach in there and you look like it, you just hear it popping and it's throat and it's, I mean, inside of its bones and vests, it just crack and pop. And finally you just rip it up. Guts and all. Boy, blood starts coming out of its mouth. And about that time, that thing went bang. And right there, man, he stuck me with something or other. And buddy, it hurt. I mean, it hurt. From then on, I ain't cared nothing about catching a catfish. Nothing whatsoever. I seen the paper here the other day where some fella caught one like 30, 30 something pounds. Did you see that? He was holding it way up here, about as big as he was. Anyway, brother, we're going to compare. You'll compare tonight catching fish to catching men. All right? First thing I want to say tonight, everybody wins somebody, is the time. The time. The time when you're going to win somebody for the Lord. Now you get somebody on your heart. Get that big fish on your mind tonight you're going to catch. Maybe it's your boss man. Maybe it's somebody you're at a school with. Maybe it's a friend at school. Somebody that you want to see get saved. You get these things tonight. Number one, the time. Experienced fishermen say that there's a certain time that it's best to go fishing. I don't know about that. That's what they say. They say it's better to go at one time than it is another time. I've heard people say it's better to go fishing early in the morning. I've heard people say it's better to go certain times at night. I've even heard people say that at certain times down at the lake or the river that the fish will bite and certain times they won't bite. I don't know if that's true or not. They say it is. They say in certain fishing holes that at certain time of day the fish will bite and a certain time they won't bite. I don't know about that. That's what they say. They say it's best to go on a certain time in a certain, at a certain place to go and it's best to go at those times. They say, they used to say that it was good fishing right after a rain. Is that right? Wonder why that is. Reckon there could be some symbolic truth in that. 
right after a rain? I don't know. Why does it make the fish after the rain? You might know. Try to tell Huh? Oh! Bugs, it knocks the bugs in the water? And then they start coming up and eating the bugs? It gets them in their eating mood. Looks like they'd be full of them, wouldn't they? <laughs> I used to think that they thought that them was bugs and raindrops was hitting bugs on the water and they went up to eat them raindrops. I thought, I thought that before. But anyway, brother, as they say that after it rains is a good time to fish. I don't know. But anyway, that's what they say. It's best to go. Now that means it would be a best time. Sometimes are better than other times to win souls, right? Sometimes there's nothing uh, such thing as a bad time, but sometimes are better than other times. Now good soul winners also know that very thing. There's good times to witness, and then there's better times to witness. For example, you don't, you don't start in on a man while he's uh, working, uh, you know, with a hard hat. I mean, I mean, here he is out here on the, working for the state, and he's got his hard hat on, and he's got a jackhammer, and he's out here on the uh, busting up the sidewalk somewhere, and he's going, <laughs> things like that. You don't, you don't, that's not the time. You don't come up to him and say, Sir, can I share with you a verse of scripture? Hey, hey, hey. You, know, you, can't, you can't do it like that. There's, now you say, well, I want a witness to him. That's not the best time. It's better to catch him when he's a little more quiet. It's better to catch him when he's not busy. I think Christians ought to use a little sense about it, don't you? I mean, you ought to use a little common sense. Somebody out here sweating or hammering and a saw and usually it's best to find somebody that's not so busy. Or when they're about mad at you anyway, you know. I mean, if you're going down the road and somebody stops in front of you, you go, bah, run into the back of the car and they get out steaming at both ears and cussing. And I mean, that's not the time to witness, brother. That's not to say, are you saved? Man, they're about ready to knock your head off. I mean, you better know that there is a good time and there is a time when it's not so good. You come in, you're a waitress in a restaurant, and you come in, you put and spill coffee over a man, that ain't the time to get him a trap. I mean, let him cool off. Let him, let him calm down. I mean, if your daddy or somebody mad, real burning hot mad, cool it for a while, and you may not catch him. I, 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 I'd have fell off a funny the other night when that guy was walking back and forth that gun and turning his head, about ready to blow his head off. They went up out of them policemen around there trying to apprehend him and saying, Sir, could I share with you a few verses of scripture? It just doesn't, I mean, that just don't work. There's a time for it, and the best time are when you can get to them. I'll tell you something else. It's usually not with best to witness somebody when they're with a bunch of their friends. If you're going to witness to a bunch, witness to all of them. Don't single a man out in front of his buddies. They'll embarrass him and he'll get mad at you. I've been, have you ever done that? Have you ever just, you really want to witness somebody real bad and you went up to the house and you had a bunch of their friends and you just started right in, are you saved? And his, his face turns about the color of this carpet and he just looks down, I mean he could kill you for embarrassing him in front of his in front of his family. It's best. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what's best. If you do this, it's usually best. If, if say, like, say like me and Brother John here comes over to your house and we're going to witness to somebody, it's usually best for Brother John to take the kids and say, hey, hey, come over here. Let me show you something and get the kid out of the way. And then everybody, if a big crowd gathers in on a person, they feel uncomfortable and they're not as apt to open up. And it's best, the best time is to get them alone. Get them alone. Get them by themselves. Say, hey, let's go in here in the living room. Sit down. Invite them over to eat. Something like that. And sit down and begin to talk to them about their soul. They'll come a lot more nigh opening up their heart when they're by yourself, yourself with you than they would be in front of a crowd. Um, remember, uh, but it'll work. It'll work. I'm not trying to discourage you from witnessing. I'm just saying, brother, the times are better. Sometimes they're better than others. Now, you can be in any situation and be a witness for the Lord. I never will forget reading about Harlem Popoff in his book, Tortured Free State. And Harlem Popoff was a Pastor, I mean, it was in Bulgaria, I believe it was, wasn't it Bulgaria? When the communists took over. And the communists came to his house in the middle of the night and said, Pastor, you're going with us. And they put him in prison. They beat him. They tortured him for 13 solid years. And he said they put him in solitary confinement. And no other prisoners in the cells 
defied him. And you know what he done? He, he didn't say, oh, well, ain't nobody witness to you. I don't guess they, I guess I ain't got no way to go out visiting. I ain't got no car or nothing. I'm just not witness. You know what he done? He got a burden. And brother, he got a burden for those prisoners that were not saved. And they had developed a little code. And in this code, they had developed this thing. And this code, um, was that they would get over next to the cell wall. And he said they'd get over next to the cell wall and they had ways to communicate with each other. They didn't have nothing to do 24 hours a day. So they'd go like this. And if they went like that, that meant A. And if they went like this, they went, that was me. And this was, that was C. And you had to count how many times he was knocking to find out what left. Can you imagine how long it would take to just say one word? I mean, like I wanted to say, uh, Bible. I say, That was Bible. And I did that for in that circuit camp. But that's how they did it. And they communicate. I mean, if you ain't got nothing else to do, I mean, you can take a while and take a conversation. And you know what he done? He began to tap out. He began to tap out one day. Are you saved? Then a little bit, the answer come back. No. Right? He went back over here. Jesus loves you. The answer come back. Yeah. It began, and he began to lead that guy down the Roman road, and he gave him Romans 3.10, and he gave him Romans 3.22, and he gave him the scripture, and told him all about it, and the answer come back, I do accept the Lord as my Savior, and he wanted to he said, I never saw him, I don't know what he looked like, I don't know what his name was, but I never even heard him speak a word, but he picked on the wall, won that guy to Jesus. I tell you, brother, what, isn't that a blessing? I tell you, brother, you can catch some fish, you can catch some fish. I tell you tonight, you know how come I ain't caught a fish in five years? I don't guess I have. I might have went down there one day when the kids was fishing. Well, let's say at least a year. You know how come I ain't caught a fish the last year? Somebody tell me. You ain't been fishing. That's right. I ain't. If I'd stay down there long enough, I don't care how sorry a fisherman I am, sooner or later I'm going to catch one. I mean, the odds are, the odds say that if you fish long enough, you're going to catch a fish. You know what our problem is? We don't go fishing. And when we go, we don't stay long enough. And you don't go down and just throw your line in there and say, well, I ain't biting. Going back home, if you stay down long enough and keep throwing it in there, you're going to catch a fish. Every boy, every, every these little boys up here on the front, these little old girls, moms and dads, everybody in here could catch a fish if you fish long enough. I tell you, buddy, you can catch a fish. Let me say secondly tonight, the place, the place, the place. The answer to this is very simple. If you want to catch fish, where would you go fishing? No, not just water. You, let's, let's see you catch one out of here. That's water. Somebody says, water. No, you ain't going to catch one out of here. That's water. Where are you going to catch fish? There you go. Where the fish are. Where's the place to go so with it? Where the people are. Sinners. 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 Go where they are. You can't say, well, I'm holier than they are. I don't want nothing to do with them. you got to go where they are. That's what Jesus did. I mean, you know what? That's why these boys go to firm land. That's why they go to trade lot. That's why they go on the, uh, to shopping center. That's why we preach on the street. That's what. That's where the people are. Somebody said, why in the world don't go out there and preach for Because that's where the people are. I mean, that's why, uh, why you go fishing at the lake, man. That's where the fish are. I'm telling you, you need to go where they are. And you go where they're alive, too. You don't want to go down there with a bunch of dead fish. See, what would you want to go? Would you want to go to the hook and anchor and go in the back room and get one of them big tubs and you ain't gonna catch none of them? They done been caught. That's like fishing at the funeral home and the sick fish. That's hospital visitation. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen an old sick fish? <laughs> Have you ever seen an old sick fish? I've seen fish come down the water. They don't lay them laying out and they're bent like that. You ever seen them? They're bent and laying sideways and their sides sticking up out of water and they're just laying there. And you go up and just take something and just kind of gouge them a little bit and they go, Ooh. I'll tell you something, brother. If a bream's healthy and you go up and touch it, sonny, he's gone just like that. But a sick fish, 
You can lower a worm right in front of his nose. And he'll just look at it. I mean, you look at that guy with your hand. But he's sick. And you know, hospital visitation like that. Some people went all those souls to the hospital. And I'm not against it. We go to the hospital. I witness in the hospital. But you know, you can't put a whole lot of stock in a lot of hospital conversions. I've seen people go in the hospital. Oh, Lord, I live for them. Get out, live mean in the devil. I, I mean, I'm not saying they don't. Some people do get saved in the hospital. Brother uh, Ramsey over here. Who you got, bud? Brother, where, you, where is Brother Ramsey? He's here a few minutes ago. Uh, anyway, he got saved in the hospital. That was this morning I was talking to him. He must be at work. But anyway, he got saved in the hospital. And a lot of people do. But I tell you, a lot of them don't. They, they need, they need to get saved when they're listening and when they can. You'll never catch a fish taking Christ's own fishing. You'll never take a fish Catch a fish, learning how to fish. You'll never catch a fish listening to tapes on how to catch fish. You'll never catch a fish learning how to buy bait and tackle boxes and spending all your money on expensive equipment. You'll never catch a fish. Uh, you'll never win a soul just win, listening to soul winning tapes. You'll never win a soul just taking courses on soul winning. You say, Glory to God, preach it, preach on soul winning. Well, you'll never win a soul as long as you know you do just hear it, as long as you just take courses, as long as you just study scripture. You gotta fall in the water, brother. Fall in the fish up. Oh, as long as you don't go fishing. You'll never catch a fish strolling by the riverbank looking at the fish or criticizing the fish. Right. You go down to the river and say, Oh, my God, baby. Woo! Look at honor. Speckled trout. Bass. Look at that. You'll never catch one like that. Yeah, you're right. You'll never catch one that says, boy, that's a sorry looking bunch of fish. Why, ooh, that thing ain't big enough to fool with. You'll never catch one like that. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of Christians that all they do is ride up and down the road. They look over there and see the boys in the pool home and say, look at that sorry bunch. Bunch of hippies. They ought to straighten up. You'll never catch a fish just going by the riverbank criticizing the fish. I mean, you got to go catch them. You go fishing. Do some fishing. I know a lot of Christians that all they do is criticize the world of how wicked they are. Well, why don't you try to help them if they're not by the same? Why don't you get a burden for them? Why don't you try to witness to them? Why don't you put the bait out and give them a track and try to get them to Jesus? I tell you, brother, I heard about this old woman named Soul Women Sophie. And old sister Sophie, they called her Soul Winning Sophie because she won so many souls. And brother, one time she's about blind, she couldn't see. And brother, one time he's downtown and there's a wooden Indian standing there. And old soul winning Sophie was up witnessing to that wooden Indian. And she couldn't see good. And she said, Now, sir, are you a Christian? You know, somebody come by and just laughed at her and made fun of her. And I tell you, they just the dumbest old woman ever was. I'd rather have a sister that was uh, maybe a little old and hard of hearing that would witness to a wooden Indian than to a sharp, intelligent. Young Christian that would know the scripture and wouldn't witness to a live Indian or a live uh, uh, European or a live uh, uh, African or an Asiatic or anybody or a Chinese or Jap a Japanese. I tell you, brother, we need to use our tongues for the glory of God and not just to criticize our neighbor. I, I've been to some churches. I preached something pretty hard in that church last week. I've been to some churches where everybody, all they do is just yak, 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 and run their mouth about each other and what we ought to be doing is using that tongue to tell somebody else about Jesus. We had uh, a bunch of people go visiting this week. We met Thursday morning, had a real good crowd. Thursday night, had a real good crowd. Saturday morning, yesterday morning, had a big crowd. Yesterday at 10 o'clock, the teenage girls met, went out, told their friends, invited their friends, and there was probably one, two, three, four, five at least six people here in church this morning because those teenage girls out witnessing yesterday. You'll never catch a fish till you go. Go, go and catch some fish. I hope God will put it on your heart to go and fish some this week during this tent revival. Let me tell you something, brother. God's hands on, brother Al. God's using but this preacher. That preacher, God, I mean, I'm not trying to lift him up, but I'm saying God's using him. And he lets God use him. This may be the chance of a lifetime to get some of your loved ones saved, some of my friends saved, kids I went to school with. It may be the chance of a lifetime to get some of them to Jesus. Let me encourage you. Put it off. Put it off. And get somebody in this house of God. Um, one time D.L. Moody was preaching. And he done the best he could. 
and some refined lady come up to him after the service. And she said, you know, you butchered the king's English. In other words, he made a lot of grammatical errors while he was preaching, didn't pronounce his words right. And he said, he stuck his tongue out and said, ma'am, you see this thing right here? And she said, yeah. And he said, I'm using that for the glory of God. What are you using yours for? They say that salesmen, when salesmen get a job to make, be salesmen, 48% of them make one call and quit. 25% of them make two calls and quit. 15% of them make three calls and quit. That means 12% of all salesmen do 80% of the business. Hard. Hard. If you can sell Amway, and you can sell Shackley and Avon and everything else. Well, you ought to be able to sell Jesus. Tell somebody about the Lord. Well, let me say thirdly tonight. I'm going to mention this. And I'm going to close in a few minutes. The bait. Here we go. We're going fishing. We've got a fishing pole. Now, what do we need to catch a fish? Bait. That's all we need. We're going to throw it in. All we need is to get us some good bait. On the hook. Somebody tell me what the bait is. The Word of God. The Bible. That's the bait. The bait. The bait. You know what? You know what the bait is? It's a live bait. Have you been going down the road and seeing live bait? Amen. I believe that's the best kind, don't you? I believe it is. You know what's a bait to catch and soul? The King James Bible. It's a lie. The Bible said it's quick. And powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's the bait. But there's something about this old book here tonight. There's something about this old book that's a bait in the heart of the souls of men. And when they hear that, brother, it creates a thirst for them and they bite it. And then that hook, the Holy Ghost hooks them inside. And the power of God reels them in. I tell you, brother, I've casted a many a Sunday morning out here. I cast it over yonder one Sunday morning. And old brother Michael over yonder took the bait and we reeled him in, brother, and caught him in right here. He's, he's been a wiggling around in the aquarium ever since. I remember one time, I, I remember one time I cast over this way, and I cast over that way, and I'd cast over that I don't know, let's see. Brother Ricky, one time we cast out yonder. You know, usually on Sunday morning, I just throw out a big net and try to just drag in whatever gets in it. Sometimes you get mud turtles and gasm goosums. But I tell you, brother, uh, sometimes you get snails and slugs. You get a big mob of people on the other you but you'll get a fish or two, amen? You'll get a fish or two if you'll put the bait out. The word of God. You know, I've been talking to people in their house and I've been trying to witness to them and I say, sir, the Lord loves you and we love you and we need you to come to us and all that stuff and it wouldn't do a thing for them. But I'd get out the bait, brother, and I'd say, let me read you something here. And I'd start reading that book. Something would begin to happen in their heart. And it'd say, for God so loved the world and the resistance would start breaking down. And brother, God begin to use that bait. And the word of God, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. And boy, I want you to know, you know, this, this Bible is alive. This Bible is alive. The word of God still the best bait. We can get, we can say we're going to have a good singing group, and that'll get in a few. We can say we're going to have a, a an ex football player give his testimony, and or somebody got healed, and they're going to tell about it, and that'll get in a few. And we can have a film, and a lot, you know, the films that we have here always have preaching in them, and they'll get in a few. You know, by far, by far, the best bait is the wiggling, alive Word of God. The Word of God, you know what new versions remind me of? Rubber worms. Yeah, that's what they remind me of. They look, they look real, but they, they just, you know, you ever tried to eat one of them things? I mean, I mean, but a rubber worm, you know, I've seen them green and purple, and you can see through them, and they got hooks inside of them, all the way down to that. Now, I, I don't know, I'm not a professional fisherman, brother, but I think a big old wiggly night crawler would be better than that, am I right? I think it would. I mean, I just think nature's way would be the best. I mean, you know, if a fish sees something wiggling, it's going to get his attention more than just a purple 
see-through worm hanging down there made out of rubber and if they come up and taste of that thing they won't want it. I tell you boy they get a they get a big juicy bite of that old night crawler buddy and about that long full of mud. I mean they get a big juicy bite of him and they'll go for it. I tell you brother them, them new versions you can catch a few you can catch a few strays. You can snag one now and then. There's some of them new versions of the Bible. I mean there's been people saved up by listening to a Catholic version or Dewey Dewey Rains or, or New International AS being something like that, but by far, by far, is the living word of the living God. By far greater is the living word of the living God. You know what testimonies remind me of? Flies. Them artificial flies. I think they'll get them little artificial flies and they have little, little, uh, Look like little feathers sticking up on them, and they look like a little bug, little rock, and they're painted red, a little feathers sticking up on them. They'll you know, that's what testimonies are. You can catch some of them. You know what uh, uh, flashy evangelism remind me of? These flashy little spinners they come out with. And these little spinners, artificial. All this is artificial bait. You can catch a few fish with it, but it ain't like the book. It ain't like the living word of the living God. The word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. I remember hearing about John Harper. And John Harper was on the Titanic the night it went down. And he was a soul winner and loved the Lord. And John Harper, that man of God, was witnessing as the Titanic went down. And the night the Titanic went down, John Harper and a bunch of other people was hanging on pieces of the boat and broken pieces of wood. And there was hanging in that one and two miles of ice cold water underneath them. And there's out there, brother, and they said John Harper was out there on the, on the water. And this man, the, the waves kind of brought this man over to him. And the old John Harper hollered out. You know, right then, he wasn't trying to get, get something to stand on. He wasn't saying, you got a lifeboat. Help, help me get out of here. John Harper said, man, is my soul saved? And there the ways are going back and forth like that. And the man hollered back and said, no, I fear it is not. And John Harper looked back at him and he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And more about that time, a big wave come along, and John Harper drifted out into the ocean. And he said, in just a little while, he said, the waves brought them two back together. He seen that same guy go by. And brother, he said, man, is thy soul saved? And that man looked back at him and he said, no, I fear it is not. And John Harper looked back at him and he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And shortly that after John Harper went down and made his grave in the waters of the Atlantic Ocean. And brother went on to the went on the judgment book to unfold to give him his reward. And brother that man that was that was out there, he believed on the Lord and trusted him as his Savior out in the Atlantic Ocean. And he stood up in a testimony meeting in Canada sometime after. And he said, Out there with two miles of water beneath me, I trusted Jesus as my Savior. I am John Harper's life convert. And I tell you, brother that's what you call having it on the tip of your tongue. That's what you call being ready instant in season and out of season. Listen, folks, there may be people in McDowell County. You listening? Are you listening? There may be people in McDowell County that if they don't get saved this week, they may never, ever, 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 ever get saved and go to hell. Oh, God, help us tonight. God, help us to quit playing games. God, help us to quit pussyfooting around. God, help us to quit uh, belly aching and dropping. They may they never get saved if some of them don't get saved this week. This may be it. Maybe it. I never will forget Brother Ed McAbee telling. You think the word of God ain't powerful? Them signs is getting the job done, brother. I don't know how many of them we got up now. We'll get them all up. We'll have 30 something up. Brother Ed told about this story. You've heard me tell again, but I like to hear it every time I think about it. I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to close in just a moment. He said there's a missionary in China, and he said this missionary was uh, trying to get some people to come to church, and this man's wife, the old Chinaman's wife, come to church, and she got saved. And she's doing real good. And never missed the service. 
And she kept trying to get her husband to come, and he wouldn't come. And she kept trying to get him to come, and he wouldn't come. And he was fault her, I think he was Buddha or some Hindu god. And he said, I'll not go to that service. I don't believe in that junk. I don't believe in your Bible. And she kept on and on and on and on to him and on to him and on to him. And every day, will you come? Will you come? Excuse me, will you come? Will you come? Will you come? And so finally, just out of respect to his wife, and just because he, she had talked him into it, he finally said, I'll go. But he said, my religion forbids me to listen to that stuff about Jesus. I don't want to hear it. I've got my religion. I'm satisfied with it. And I don't want to change. He said, I'll not hear one word they say. I'll go just to please you one time. And so that night, that big old Chinaman come in and sat down in the pew. And he said, that old oh, oh, is about in the open air service, you know, and had like a brush harbor and no sides on the building. And boy, there's out there in the open air, except for the brush harbor on the top of them, or the cover on the top of them. And he said, that preacher began to preach. And he said, right when that preacher began to preach, he said, that old Chinaman took one finger right back and plugged this ear with it. And he took his other finger and plugged this other ear. And he stuck right there just like this. And he said, I'll not hear one word that that preacher said. And boy, he said he'd sit there for a little while and that old preacher began to preach. And he said, it wasn't but just a little while that the strangest thing happened. He said, there's a great big old horse fly come in that building. And boy, it brings me in the like a 747, brother, over top of that congregation. And he said, that thing come, we used to have them come in here like that. Back when we had the old windows, had a big old window over yonder, big and there, man, we've had uh, wasps and all kind of stuff flying around in here, getting in women's hair and everything. When we first started the church, but I tell you, brother, them, them old, that old bee come down, and man, he come in for a three-point landing, right on the end. That old boy's nose. Great big old horse fly. And he's sitting there like this. And he couldn't get it off. And he's like, <laughs> and, he said, and, he said, and he couldn't get it off. And boy, he's about to aggravate him to death. And it, and it began to just, it just right down on the end of his nose. And he finally couldn't stand it no longer. And he took his hand off and went, why? And when he did that, the Holy Ghost had the preacher right at the right spot, and the preacher said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish without the rest of life. And boy, the word of God went out there and went in that old China man's ear and right down into his heart and exploded. And boy, when he heard that, he said, I, What did he say? And he heard a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, and he got saved that night, and go right with God. That's the power. Oh, that's the bait, brother. You put that bait out there and keep putting it out. I don't care if Chinaman, Japanese, it don't matter, alcoholic, drug addict. But when the bait gets a hold of them and they take it, they'll get saved. I heard about a young man who was going to Africa as a missionary. And he wanted his girlfriend to marry him and go to Africa to be with him on a mission field. And she said, I could never do that. I couldn't leave my home and go to a faraway land like that. <clears throat> and he said, okay. And right before he was supposed to went, she changed her mind and said, oh, honey, I do love you. And I do want to go and all this. And she sent a letter and said, I will go with you. And give it to his brother and said, take it to him. Tell him I want to go. And you know what happened? His brother put it in his coat pocket and forgot about it. And the man went on to the mission field, never knowing that his fiance would have went with him. He could have had her with him. She could have been happy and been on the mission field and won souls to Jesus. Do you know why I didn't? That other brother kept that letter in his pocket. Now, folks, I believe tonight that there'd be a lot of people get saved if we'd take what God's give us and get it out of our pocket. The Lord's made the provision. I mean, he's wrote them the right letter. He's told them how to be saved. And if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. We're sticking the bait in our pocket. We shut up about the bait when we go out these doors. And that's why we don't see many people saved. We ought to make up our mind that we're going to put out the bait. Let's decide tonight to win a soul 
Everybody can win somebody. I've not been a great soul winner, and I'm ashamed of it. I want to be a better, by the grace of God, I want to rededicate my life to be a better soul winner. I do. I mean that. Here a while back, the Lord allowed me to win three people of the Lord in a week's time, a week and one day. And I said, Glory to God, hallelujah, it's wonderful. And then I hit a dry spell, and now I'm hungry again. And I like that little song that we sing sometime with the kids. You know, oh, how sweet to walk. Round and round the block, ringing doorbells for my Lord, wearing out my shoes, telling God's good news, ringing doorbells for my Lord. Let's see if we can sing that. Ain't nobody here but us. Okay? <clears throat> Ready? Might have to get a little higher than that. Oh, how sweet to walk. Round and round the block, ringing doorbells for my louder, wearing out my shoes, telling God's good news, ringing doorbells for my Lord, ringing doorbell, ringing doorbell, ringing doorbells for my Lord, ringing Ringing, ringing doorbells for my Lord. Nothing like it. It's sweet and it's wonderful to tell somebody about Jesus. I ain't really hardly preached tonight. I've just kind of talked to you a little while. But I believe this is what the Lord laid on my heart. I hope you'll take it. I hope you want to do something about it. Let's bow our heads. Now we're going to have an altar prayer tonight. I'll let you go home early. I want Sister Kathy to play something or another, whatever she picks out. Maybe someone here tonight say, Brother Danny, I can't be a soul winner. I, I'm not even right with God myself. Got to get right with the Lord tonight. Pick out somebody, your cousin, your brother, your sister, your mother, your dad, your aunt, your uncle, your friend at school, your friend on the job, and say, oh, I'd like to see them get saved, and put the bait out. Give them a track. Tell them that Jesus loves them. We're going to have an old-fashioned altar prayer tonight, a few minutes before we go. I know there's many of you, there's no way everybody can get in the altar, but if you need to come, if you want to come, you We'll have the men over here on my left, the ladies over here on my right, and we'll have an old-fashioned altar prayer. If you want to just dedicate your life to the Lord, say, Brother Danny, I want to win somebody. Everybody can win somebody, and I want to win somebody to the Lord Jesus. I want to so bad. You know what the Bible says? Delight thyself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. If you want to win a soul bad enough, you'll get to win one. If you won't get weary, if you won't give up, if you won't let somebody making fun of you or getting mad at you stop you, you can win somebody if you keep trying. I'll guarantee you can. Then maybe there's someone just say, I want to just go pour out my heart for the revival. Glory to God. Pray with the Lord and move in mighty power. Let's come on. Let's come on to the altar right now. If you're not hindered in some way, you can kneel in the aisles. You can get on these front benches. Everybody can win somebody. Everybody can win somebody. There's people that you can win that I can't win. That's right. There's people that you can win to Jesus that will not even listen to me. Make it all the way out of these front benches, these side aisles here. Somebody can come up here on the platform. Some of you men can. Uh, some of you men right here come on up here on the platform and make room for some of these other fellas. we got plenty of room up here on the platform. Some of you men want to come on up here to choir. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Plenty of room. If you need to come, want to come. Plenty of room. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. All right. We're going to pray here for a few minutes tonight while she plays. If you're not right with the Lord tonight, you ought to just come on and get right with him. Come on and get right with him. 
Maybe you're here at the altar tonight and you're going to ask the Lord to give you special power to win a certain person. Maybe somebody at school or, or somebody in your family and you'll say, Lord, I want to win that person to Jesus. Help me to do it, Lord. Help me not to be ashamed. Help me to do it. Why don't you do that right now? You say, I'm just embarrassed. I'm just embarrassed to talk about the Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me not to be ashamed. I want to do it. Help me not to be ashamed. Help me not to be ashamed. Amen. Let's just everyone pray. Everyone pray and have a little time of prayer tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege of calling on your name. Lord, I'm so thankful tonight that you let us live in a country where we can pray, where we can go to church, where we can love you and serve you and preach your word. God, I thank you for these, my brothers and my sisters here tonight. God, I want to rededicate my life to you tonight to be a soul winner for Jesus. Oh, blessed Lord. Blessed Lord. Let me be a soul winner. God, let me be a soul winner. God, I pray for my cousins, my friends, my neighbors, that are lost. Give me a burden for them, God. Give me a burden for them, dear Lord. I pray you would. Help me to be a fisher of men. I know everybody can win somebody. God, help me to win somebody this week. Let me win a soul this week, to you, Lord? God, some, someone is seeking out there. Someone that's hungry. Someone that don't have a Savior. Lead me to them this week, dear God. Let me tell them about the wonderful Savior, God of God. Work in my heart, dear Heavenly Father. I am pray the Holy Ghost would come and do what ought to be done in my heart. Cleanse me from every bit of filthy, nasty, wicked, ungodly, ugly sin. And dear God, help me to see old house sweet to walk round and round the block. Ringing doorbells for my Lord. Wind up my shoes, telling God good news. Hallelujah! Be in my boat. Hallelujah. God, help us not be fishers of men. Help us not, Lord, just to be keepers of the aquarium. Help us not be to criticize the fish, but to catch the fish. Lord of God, help us to have the bait. The word of God on our tongues, on our lips. Make it possible, God, that we can study it and pray. Help us to use our time and our energy and our talents. Right? Dear God, move in on that tent revival this week. May a mighty rushing wind from glory come across that tent. Bless Brother Ralph Sexton Jr. God, I pray you'd give him the messages from on high. Holy Father, I pray, God, uh, Lord, that he'd have the message from glory. God, to preach to the people. God, I pray, Lord, that sinners be in a conviction. God, Heavenly Father, for the, the special service on Saturday night, I pray a hundred and fifty people get saved by the grace of God. I pray that many, many thousands will be saved as a result of this meeting and that churches will be revived. This Zion Hill, this Maranatha, this West Fort, First Baptist, First Methodist, and the Presbyterian churches, and East Side, and John Sunnyvale, and Dada, Mount Pleasant, Warren, Denver, and Bethel, and all those churches. God, I pray for those lives in their church. God, I pray, Lord, for uh, their Charles Dix. God, I pray, Lord, for all the churches. God, that are involved in this meeting. May the Holy Ghost of God come and get all the Lord. And God, give the people of our God. Fill up people for the glory of God with the glory of God. With people for the glory of God. I pray that boys and girls. <laughs> Oh, Lord of God, they'll be saved this week. I pray that teenagers from the high schools will walk those eyes. Glory to God. Send the man, Father. Hallelujah. Send the man, Lord, to walk the eyes. God, I pray God. Oh, God. Send the Bible. Revive us again. That the people may rejoice in me. Oh, God, tonight. I pray, dear God, that sinners will be under conviction. God, I pray that people walk those eyes and get right with God. Every part of our life, pray. Oh, dear God, that men walking up down these highways and people in those houses will be going to that old fashioned sin and the put of their sin. I pray for our ladies here that's got lost husbands. God, that they come and be saved. 
I pray for him for him and others come. Thank you for giving. God, I pray for those that are back for those, those. May the Holy Ghost and time come on them. May the time they live right with you. May the time they take their heart and their life. Holy Father, I pray tonight. Let the Holy Ghost move in. Move in. Move in. Move in. Oh, God, move in. We'll praise and thank you for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord, commit these services in the lie here. Help us to pray. Help us to fast. Help us to win souls. For the glory of God. We'll thank you. We'll praise you. We'll give you the glory. We do love you tonight, Jesus. Lord of God, we love you. And help us to live like it every day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Boom bonus, boom bonus, we pray. Amen.